Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. So today I want to discuss something that um, if you've seen any of my earlier videos talking about tone woods and other things, um, then you'll know this is right up my alley. So I was watching a video with the guitologist, Brad, who I enjoy his videos for the most part. Um, I'm interested in the tech stuff, so I enjoy it. But he was showing a video where Billy Corgan was saying that the paint affects the wood. The irony in his video is that his um, video was sponsored that day by some pick company, The Tone of Wood. You know, so I want to dispel what a, how the pick affects the sound of your instrument and all that stuff. And I'm going to show you because... Um, it'll become more clear. When we talk about when we talk about tone of an instrument, um, you know, if we're speaking about forced resonance, about an acoustic instrument, well, then this makes sense because the instrument itself is used to amplify the strings. So therefore, anything that's attached will have some effect whether it be minor or major it'll have a bearing on the sound uh, the attack not so much you know if we take a look at a sound wave we can see that the main section of the sound wave is the sound of the string vibrating the Attack is something that we hear for a nanosecond, and that will change, um, varying on um, how we attack the string and what we attack the string with. And then we use things like compression and gain, and these things become the great equalizer, and it basically takes away what you're hearing in the attack so much, especially compression. But anyways... We can take a look at the way a force resonance of an instrument, the instrument's vibrating. On electric guitar, we have pickups. And those pickups are there to see one thing. They are to make a magnetic field. And then the string disrupts it. And uh, that disruption is read and sent to the output jack. And that's your signal. So um, it doesn't know what wood is. It's, it's not magnetic. It, it has no bearing on the sound. Um, your saddles have no bearing. This is a, a node which has a zero amplitude in, a, in, a, in the waveform when the string vibrates. And therefore that can't have an effect on the sound. And it doesn't. As long as this is hard enough and sturdy enough to make it so that 25 and a half inches of the string is vibrating from end to end. Because I get people saying, well, what if I put jello there? Well, jello's not going to allow 25 and a half inches to vibrate. It'll vibrate beyond it and through it. It's not a solid enough object. Anyway, so I wanted to show you real quickly here um, varying picks. And then you can go through it. And I'll mix them around afterwards so you can hear the sound. I have a bunch in front of me here. This is what I use. I use the Altex by Dunlop. And I use a 1.4. And it's called a Sharp because I happen to like that point. And that's my main pick that I use on electric guitars. On acoustics, um, it tends to... When I play it acoustically, it I don't like the it sounds a little rough to me, so I use something a little softer, like a Fender Extra Heavy. Uh, that's for my personal taste. Coming out of the amplifier, no one's hearing any bit of a difference, so I don't care. But so if I happen to grab this, I'm playing with it. But I prefer the sound of this. In fact, I prefer the sound of these, which is. Um, this was a pick I had made years ago with one of my tattoos on it and uh, uh, my name. And um, uh, Steve Clayton makes these. Uh, and I like these on acoustics. I like the way they sound. On acoustics, they will have some bearing. 
However, in this demonstration, I'm going to, this is the only pick that's going to be used in this demonstration. I have this giant thick wood pick that I was told adds all kinds of tone. And um, the, the company that I think Brad was repping makes all kinds of wood picks, Coca Bola, and all this stuff. And we'll see. The Big Stubby. I think this is a uh, 3.0 common pick that people use. This is a pick that I saw somebody demoing online. I ordered one. It's this pro pick um, by Daw Man, and um, I hate it. I, not the way it sounds, the way it feels. Mostly for me, it's the way it feels in my hand. And then for years, I was using stainless steel, and this is the thickest one of them, even though it's relative, which is why I loved it, because it was so thin. But this is a Dunlop pick, stainless steel, as you can hear. Now, if I play and demo this, like this pick here, you're also going to hear it acoustically from this mic. So in a moment, I am going to play these picks in a random order, and I'm going to play the same licks, and then we can listen and see if there's a change in tone. Are you ready? Let's go. For me, um, it really is how about the attack and how I'm playing it more so than what I'm actually using. Um, it's just, I just wanted to get this out there because I think it's so crazy when I see these people. It's like, oh, like, Graph Tech. Oh, you got to hear the tone the pick has. It's such a great tone. Uh, yeah. To me, it makes as much sense as somebody telling me about the um, paint on the guitar. The other thing is, so thickness will affect more than what the material is. If you're buying wood picks and you're like, oh, the Coca Bowl is warm, but the actual Dalbergia Negro Brazilian sounds so much nicer. and then you're an idiot because it's the same density. It's the same hardness. I mean, it's going to hit it exactly the same. The strings don't sit there and be like, ooh, that is a warm tone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Christ, you're listening to moronic talk. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to shoot this video 
and put it out there and show you that the picks, it doesn't matter what the hell you're using. One of the picks I used was stainless steel. And, um, you know, what, what does that do? Well, it's a thinner pick, easier to hold, in my opinion, and chews the living shit out of your strings so I don't use them anymore. Um, my pick of choice out of all of these, again, I use the Altex. Um, I happen to like it. It doesn't mean that you should like it. It doesn't mean that you should like any of these. You can like whatever the hell you like. It's a total preference, but you can't go listen to an album and be like, oh, did you hear that Clapton solo? You can tell that's an Ernie Ball pick. What? what? Whoa. You Go listen to a record and tell me what pick they're using. And it's the most insane, asinine thing I've ever seen. And we that's what we've become. We've become completely... Um, fools when it comes to this the market is completely selling everybody oh you want to play like uh you want to sound like this guy well this guy uses tortex ye uh, yellow you better use tortex yellow so you can cut your gold album yeah um i just found out recently the guy in queen uses a um you know a coin and i knew billy gibbons used a coin can i tell on the record no I can't tell a damn thing. All I can hear is a great song. Yeah, he has a great tone that nobody else has. Well, let's see. He's playing an, a guitar that nobody else has with all kinds of phase switching that nobody else has. With Strat style pickups into a treble boost into a Vox amp. Um, you know, he's got his own thing going. You can easily buy his guitar online and put it through a, a treble boost into a Vox, you're going to sound just like Brian May, and you don't even have to use the quarter or the six pence thing or whatever that two, whatever the hell, whatever pence he's using. I have no idea. I have no idea what the hell he's using. I don't know what that, I, I couldn't tell you anything. Um, it looks like a nickel. Anyways. Anyways, that's me, and uh, that's all I got for today. Very good. Thank you.